Hi everyone, my name is Miss McLean and I am here to share with you one of my favorite books from when I was little. It's called Mousekin's Golden House. It's story and pictures by Edna Miller. In the woods, there are many tall trees and small trees that reach to grow tall in the deep shade. There are low growing bushes with berries and seeds that pop and roll about the, the forest floor. Beneath them all are tiny paths that only mice can see. One moonlit night, Mousekin followed just such a path to one of his homes in the chestnut log. And right in the middle of that very small path, Mousekin saw something that someone had thrown away when Halloween was over. He hid behind a log. Perhaps it was dangerous. Mousekin had never seen a jack-o'-lantern in all his mouse days. He wriggled his nose furiously at the strange pumpkin smell. He was so excited that he drummed his tiny paw on the hollow log. Mousekin was so interested in the jack-o'-lantern that he did not watch for danger with his bright shoe-button eyes. Nor did he turn his large ears to the breeze to listen for the sound of wings for owls and hawks and other creatures who wait to catch a whitefoot mouse. Suddenly, as Mousekin made a second turn around the smiling face, a hungry young owl swooped toward him. But before the bird could even blink its eyes, Mousekin jumped straight into the jack-o'-lantern's mouth. Once inside, he looked about. He was in a beautiful golden room, just the right size for a little mouse. From the top of the windows of his new room, Mousekin could see the owl sulking in an evergreen tree. The first rays of morning sun showed in the sky behind the owl. Night was over and it was time for Mousekin to go to sleep. Mousekin felt safe inside the sturdy walls of his golden house. He did not awaken until evening when the Katydids began to argue. Katie did, Katie didn't. After he had stretched and cleaned his white undercoat, he began to explore his new home, scurrying in one window and out another. Now Mousekin was alert to all the sounds that filled the woods when evening came. He heard a rustle in a bayberry brush and a soft step of, on the dry autumn leaves. He knew it was the cat. Just as the cat was about to spring, Mousekin dove into the pumpkin and began to house clean. Out of all the windows flew bits of candle and pumpkin seeds. The cat jumped, but not for Mousekin. He jumped straight up, then ran as fast as he could to get away from the big round face with the terrible teeth. The cat would never take that path through the woods again. The days grew shorter and the nights longer. Mousekin worked each night to fill his house with things to keep him warm and comfortable in his new home. He split grasses with his razor sharp teeth and wove the long slender threads around and around he made many trips through the woods to find soft things to line his nest. Little feathers dropped by a bird in flight, thistledown and milkweed that grew in the clearing. While Mousekin was busy gnawing and nibbling and doing all the things that mice do, he still found time to watch the animals that passed by his golden house. One very ch chilly evening, a box turtle plodded by. He never looked up or down but moved like a toy being pulled to the pond at the edge of the wood. 
to some tangled tree root beneath the ground where he would sleep away the winter months. But when the turtle reached the jack-o'-lantern, he stopped in his tracks and stretched his neck to see if what he saw was true. Just then, Mousekin popped his head out of one of the windows. And then the box turtle lost no time in turning around and heading once again for the tangled root beneath the ground near the pond at the edge of the wood. Most of the birds had gone to warmer lands. Only the Phoebe was left in the thistle. The wind blew hard now, scooping up piles of leaves and scattering them about like hundreds of bright winged birds. One day, the Phoebe called to Mousekin. Come south with me, come right away. Your house will never do. The wind will blow and the snow will snow and chill you through and through. The little mouse whistled a high, soft goodbye. He would not leave his golden house. A chipmunk hurried by, his mouth so full of nuts he could hardly speak. Come with me beneath the ground, that house will never do. The wind will blow and the snow will snow and chill you through and through. Mousekin scrambled up his golden house and slipped through a tiny opening at the top. He slid down the feathery stairway to the warm, soft lining below. Mousekin curled up, tucked his tiny feet beneath him, wrapped his long tail around some milkweed down, and pulled it closely around him and fell fast asleep. Little by little and bit by bit, something happened to the jack-o'-lantern. It began to close its eyes in the frosty air. It shut its mouth against the cold wind. The next day, the gray sky opened and great white flakes fell upon the sleeping pumpkin. Inside, Mouse was curled up into a tiny fur ball. He was safe and warm and fast asleep in his golden house. So that was Mousekin's Golden House. I hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, uh, there are many other books by Edna Miller written about Mousekin and his many adventures, and I hope you go find them and read them. Thank you so much for joining me. Goodbye. <laughs>